Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my Uniraza channel. Now, let me remind all of you to please like uh, and follow my Uniraza Facebook and Instagram, as well as subscribe to my Uniraza YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our events. Now, our students are faced with so many challenges throughout their life's journey. They are in the process of building up their skills and gaining knowledge, not only from schools or universities, but also from the community around them. So they need to learn and engage with the community out there. Community engagement pedagogies, often called service learning, are ones that combine learning goals and community service in ways that can enhance both student growth and the common good. It is a teaching and learning strategy that integrates meaningful community service with instruction and reflection to enrich the learning experience, teach civic responsibility, and also strengthen communities. 
Now, each student in Unireza have their own unique journey of life to tell. Today, we are talking to two such students and our Chief Student Experience Officer to give you a narrative of how they balance between learning and serving the community's needs. Now, our topic for today is Real World Projects, the balance between learning and community needs. And our great speakers uh, today will share their knowledge to all the viewers who are tuned in. But first, let's just watch a corporate video of Unireza. Hi everyone, good evening. Evening Grace. Okay, uh, so um, so I'm just going to introduce very briefly everyone here. Uh, first, on, on your right, I think it's uh, is Associate Professor Dr. Zohaili Akmal. He's the Chief Student uh, Experience slash Chief Wisdom Officer. And as, uh, below our students, on the left, uh, we have Mr. Haris bin Isan. Uh, also known as Hasni, he is the president of Raza Rangers 2019 2020. Um, unfortunately, he is uh, at a place or the internet is not so safe. So please allow him to go in and out, or he will seem like he's uh, dead. To keep him on the show, and if he can answer, he will just uh, give his input. Yeah. And we also have Mr. Wan Muhammad Shafiq Faiz, PPM. Hi. Um, so, so that's just their names. I'm going to also tell you who exactly they are. Let's start with Dr. Zuhaili. Now, more than your basic salt and pepper shakers, Zuhaili doubled in various parts before he discovered art in high school. And life, this is it. As a result, he is quite unremorsefully a civilized rebel, uh, re rebel that never follows trends and is constantly marching to the beat of his own drum, ahead of the pack. And as one of my boss, I can tell you that is very true. Uh, he graduated from uh, Syracuse University with a degree in advertising, uh, creative and minoring in English and social studies. So right after graduation, Zuhaili worked in New York as an art director for eight years and then came back to Malaysia to become an educational advocate and a creative consultant. Clean, he is burning the candle at the end as the Chief Experience Officer or you can call him Chief Wisdom Officer for the School of Happiness at University Student and the Director of General Studies. Okay, and, and that is just a brief one I, I have really shortened 
in it. So what the show Dr. So highly. Okay. Um, I'm also going to very briefly uh, tell everyone about uh, Mr. Harris, who still seems quite static over there, but he is he was one of the students and also a very prominent student in Uni Raza. You can see him everywhere when we are there. So he is actually a final year accounting student and will be expected to finish his study 2022 with Bachelor of accredited by CPA Australia. He is a passionate learner. He has always believed that knowledge is more than just sitting hours in class listening to lectures. However, we shouldn't be undermining them. In pursuit of knowledge, we need to test the limitations of our knowledge, challenging them in order to become a better person as a whole. So that is a quote from him. And uh, he loves to participate in CSR programs as well. Okay, and I'm also going to be about Mr. Wan Muhammad Shafiq Faiz. He is a KPMG ambassador, the second a second year student in Uniraza under Bachelor of Taxation with Honours, and is expected to graduate in June 2022. Always eager on learning new experience in polishing his clerical and management skills in order to prepare himself to become a better graduate with various skills. Currently, he uh, has joined KPMG ambas uh, Ambassadorship Program in 2021 and is the president for University Tunapuraza Tech Club. Okay, and, and um, again, welcome everyone. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, when it comes to Harris's turn, um, if he is unable to answer, uh, any, both of you can answer on his behalf uh, because he is no stranger to university. I think everybody from the guard to, to, to the lecturers to, to the management, they know him, so we can speak on his behalf. Only good things though. Okay, uh, Dr. Zuhaili, my, my first question is to you. As a chief student experience officer, how do you design relevant and engaging learning experiences among the students in Universa? All right, thank you, Grace. So uh, yeah. basically, whenever we wanted to design a program for the student itself, we always refer back to the user. And the user here is basically the students. And we always believe that rather than us designing it, it's better to give the power to the students for them to design and direct how their student experience is. So what we do is that we always ask the student to submit a proposal or probably pitch to us what's their idea what's the ideal student experience for them. So usually, for example, like with Shafe or Harris himself, whenever they have an idea, they would submit a proposal with uh, what they wanted to do, what they wanted to achieve. And what we always tell them is that try to think in a bigger picture, which is basically uh, what actually they wanted to achieve by the end of the journey itself. So we believe that it is very important to give the power to the student because we believe that they are the future leaders that are going to help all of us over here and probably make Malaysia a better place. So we wanted to expose them from project management, from pitching, from budgeting, to make sure how many audience going to attend. And what we always tell them is that rather than just have an activity for the sake of having an activity, we always tell them to try to cur curate an experience that will be a wholesome experience. Meaning that at the same time, it will have the fun element, but at the same time with the educational element. So we always believe that to give the power to the student to do direct and curate their own activities are probably the best way and the future of Unirasa student experience. So that's how a little bit of what we did a little bit just to help them out. Uh, but at the same time also, our happiness heroes over here, uh, we always try to assist them and to guide them because we always believe that, like for example, uh, there's always a Yoda to like, and Star Wars, uh, and then there's always like Dumbledore to Harry Potter. There's always a guidance to help out someone in order for their journey. And we believe that the happiness heroes 
uh, the people from the student experience, the division of student experience will be over here to help them out with any question or any assistance that they need in order for them to be the best version of themselves or just for the activities to be the best activities ever. So we believe that it's almost like a patch porch of everybody helping out with each other. But we believe that uh, rather than a one game, uh, a one man show, it's better to have everybody to work together, to curate together at the same time, also to have fun. No matter what, we always tell the students is that make sure that you have fun with the activities because at the end, the activities is for you guys. That's the most important part of, especially with the student experience or in general with the student activities over here. Great. So, uh, power to the students uh, with proper guidance from experienced uh, mentors such as yourself uh, and things like that is the way to go. And I, I'm glad that you have them uh, experience uh, all aspects of a, a project uh, or something like that to enhance their skills. Uh, but what kind of opportunities do you provide uh, to them to expand their knowledge and experiences? Uh, could you give us an example? Maybe? Yeah, sure. So uh, some of the activities that we like to divide uh, or tell the student uh, for them to explore uh, comes from the community engagement. The community engagement, usually what we try to do is that uh, it's the part with the human element of the activities itself. So for example, one of the activities that we had recently is that a group of students going to uh, the low-cost housing to help out the people, the city dwellers at the low-cost housing. So, uh, right. Because of the pandemic right now, we notice that it's really hard for the student to go out or just to venture into the uh, area. So what the students did is that some of them did the e-volunteerism uh, or e-community engagement at the same time and we always tell students no matter how high up your position is one day, we believe that it is very important for you to be involved with the community. That is one of the options itself. So the other option is that it's basically the sports option on campus. Even though we are a vertical campus, we are not SPS, any public university or any other private university, we do provide the sports experience to the students. Uh, for example, we have a men rugby, a female rugby team, uh, which I'm proud to say that our female rugby team is probably among the best uh, in Kuala Lumpur. We also have badminton, we have soccer, we have futsal. Uh, we are not such a sports university, but we do encourage students to suggest to us before we have an e-sport, uh, but probably it's already subdued a little bit because everybody is kind of busy. Apart from that also, we have like some sort of activities like the leisure activities, uh, like chess, the one that Shafiq joined. Uh, we also have a lot of activities like uh, debate, uh, one of our uh, cream of the crop is our Toastmasters, which actually kind of polish you on your public speaking skills. Uh, Paris is part of the Toastmasters as well. And our Toastmaster was like the third most active in the world. And we were among the first one in Asia actually penetrate, penetrated into the ranking itself. And we are very proud to do that. Uh, so that's on the leisure part. Apart from that, also we have activities just to improve the personal development. Uh, activities such as our English club, we have uh, even like uh, Indian club where all the students learn the different festivals or the culture in a certain group. We also have international student club, so many of it. The good thing about Uni Raza is that because we are so small, it's a little bit easy for the students to suggest whatever they wanted to do. Meaning that if they have an idea they wanted to open a club, they can propose to us and pitch it to us and we'll be able to cater it. Uh, compared to other university, because it's such a big university to other university itself, uh, it will take time for students to create a new club or a new group or even to propose an activity. At Uni Raza, it's quite fast. The students submit a proposal, pitch to us, we'll contact the student. Within two weeks, we'll tell the student whether the budget got approved or not, and then we'll get back to the student for the student to execute the program. So, uh, the sky is the limit, basically, at Uni Raza with all the activities. But if I can encapsulate the types of activities that we have at Uni Raza, Basically, we have the community engagement, we have the leisure part, we have the clubs and the groups, and also we have the personal development activities. And also, 
and also the sports that you mentioned like rugby for men and for women that that's really unique yeah okay hey thank you so much highly uh, uh, i believe uh, mr faris is um can you hear us i'm just going to give it a try can you hear us okay i don't think he can so mr shafiq i'm going to go over to you uh what as a student of bachelor of taxation what is your role as a mg ambassador and how do you manage your time between studying and involvement in other activities at uni raiva so maybe you can explain a little bit about you know being a kpm professor and then uh proceed to the next question sure so thanks grace for the question so for the first question on our roles as a kpmg ambassador we were actually representing uni raza in this kpmg ambassadorship program which starts from 2021 as many other top universities in malaysia also involved in this program for instance we have university teknologi petronas uitm taylor sunway and many other top universities in malaysia perhaps as for the as for the viewers information niraza and kpmg had signed the mou which which means that there will be more upcoming exciting events that for you guys for the razakin so don't forget that and perhaps i can see that we are working as a middle person between niraza and also kpmg for the future collaborations in the future and so on so on how i manage my time between studies and my involvement in the club so for me personally priority i always prioritize my studies before i do something else for instance yes i do play games i do play sports but i always plan my time i always plan my schedule i always have my timetable which one i should do first because as a student right i have to when when it comes to studies matter i have to put a bit more effort you know because yeah i have to score in this every sem because it is my target so when i join this club which means that i am ready i am fully ready and fully prepared to be busy while studying so but you you don't have to get me wrong because being a kpmg ambassador doesn't put any pressure on me perhaps it is some sort of motivation that boosts my confidence in and out actually we are just like a big family you know like a big family in kpmg family not just between us be, between the kpmg ambassadors in raza but also with ambassadors from other universities let's say if we we probably i can say that we are quite close to ambassadors from intech college so we always keep in touch with each other perhaps perhaps also our advisor mr anil and mr mukris they also keep in touch with us about our updates on our events and so on so i guess that's all uh, but okay. the interesting things actually about kpmg uh, if you don't mind me interjecting a no, little no, bit no, no. i do KPMG is quite close to us because we had the chairman of KPMG coming over here uh and then also apart from that also we have a big event and it was great to see how like uh for example like Shafiq Harris uh, um Nick Farzana also we saw them uh the president basically kind of curated like your own video they kind of had fun they had a video shoot they even organized their first event this year which is quite amazing and we thought that KPMG uh, ambassadorship is just one example that we wanted to start off because for mm-hmm. sure after this we're going to have the other big force also coming in and probably to help students to uh, do the ambassadorship program because the ambassadorship program is a model where the industry is being connected into the academia field because the biggest problem is that a lot of students felt like the industry is not being tapped much when they are studying at university with KPMG ambassadorship uh, the students are able to interact directly with the staff member of KPMG at the same time also to be advised and be mentored by them so we wanted to curate a more activities and experience similar to that and to tell you the truth Shafi and the rest of uh, troop is almost like our guinea pig in the beginning because we wanted yeah. to see how the camera very with the industry going to work but it was like amazing especially the type of students with Shafi because I had the pleasure teaching Shafi even uh Harris we had a program together before and 
I believe that they are the future of Malaysia one day because they are able to have fun but at the same time also to focus and prioritize what is important in life. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, I, and I also relate to that because I was fortunate enough to attend the MOU uh, signing ceremony between KPMG and uh, Uniraza, whereby uh, we officiated uh, KPMG ambassadors uh, during that ceremony. And I am so uh, uh, prideful, or I am so uh, inspired to see how KPMG is really uh, keen on you know, shaping our students and men mentoring our students. So rest assured, the students at Uniraza, especially those who are taking uh, taxation, they um, they actually have mentors that are industry already in this industry and um, and they know what's it like out there already while they are studying at the university. So uh, really good uh, kudos to you, uh, Mr. Shafiq, for being a KPMG ambassador and being that bridge uh, from students and 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 the people at the industry in KPMG itself, and you know, and and really representing not just KPMG but Uniraza as well. So, uh, uh, like you said, it sounds big, it sounds like a heavy responsibility, but don't get you wrong. Uh, you are able to still balance your study life and uh, and your other involvement in the university really well. Okay. Um, I, I suppose Mr. Harris is uh, still um, uh, frozen there, but uh, Mr. Harris, if you are watching this somehow and if you want to comment your answers or if you want to uh, text me your answers, I, I'm, I'm more than happy to read it out on your behalf, okay? Right, uh, so question will be to Dr. Zuhaili again. Um, let's talk about the community needs. Yeah. How can an educational institution such as Miraza and the community work together? And why is community involvement important in education learning? All right. Uh, it's great that how you say about how both kind of like a symbiosis, like working together, because I always believe that it's very important to work together. Uh, the biggest saboteur for nowadays kids, I felt like, it's probably we are so focused on the vanity part we are so focused on tiktok video we are so focused on social media that we tend to forget the kindness which is quite important to serve back into the community so what we do at Union Raza is that we kind of wanted to shape the student almost similar to Tun Abdul Raza who was like almost like a civilized rebel during his time but at the same time I always remember the story uh, the story of Tun Abdul Raza has to choose whether to take a driver to go to the school or to work to uh, or to walk to school, uh, he actually chose to walk to school. The reason he chose to walk to the school, he wanted to experience the hard work in order to get to school, rather than just sitting in a car leisurely and enjoying his time getting to the school. So that is one of the um, probably like mantra that we really hold closely at Uniraza because we wanted our students to experience the hardship and also at the same time to give back to the community. So when we did, uh, we started this off, it was thanks to the Ministry of Higher Education when they introduced the program of what, uh, the subject actually, the Community Engagement and Volunteerism. It started off from there where it is compulsory for each student at Uniraza to take Community Engagement and Volunteerism where they have uh, to propose an activity where they will do a volunteerism activity. But we wanted to make it a little bit bigger. So what we did is that we kind of challenged each lecturer at Uniraza to integrate a little bit into their uh, course syllabus where if you are doing a project, why not you try to connect with the community. And it started off with our Division of Student Experience or School of Happiness trying to source out to find community that needed help. Because sometimes we do take for granted because we felt like you live in Kuala Lumpur, everything is a la la land, it's almost like a bed of roses. But we forget sometimes there are people in need that really need help uh, because there are people who are city dwellers but still uh, struggling to survive or struggling with their businesses or struggling to get help. So what we did is that uh, we integrated into some of our classes and also we have our Razak Ranges uh, which Harris is the president. 
So what Razak Rangers did is that they tried to source some of the community engagement project they can do, like for example, like the orphanage or even something really small. We always tell our students it doesn't have to be a big project. It could be something as small as like you go to the river and collect all the trash over there to help out with sustainability and all of that. So uh, some of the community engagement that I mentioned before, like for example, the PPR, uh, we actually approach uh, the minister, the Ministry of Housing and Environment as well. But we also approach the city ministry, uh, DBKL. So DBKL worked closely with us where we actually went to community that are in need and try to transform the community. And on the community engagement itself, we try to stay away from Gotoroyo or just cleaning the area. We try to go a bit beyond where the student will come in as a consultant, where they will ask the community in need what they actually needed. So the project that we went to the PPR TD Wangsa, actually the student went in as a consultant and talked to the city dwellers over there. And they were able to find out that they were having problems with the senior citizen not knowing what to do uh, during their free time. And apart from that, also the small kids also don't have proper activities to do. And also uh, they focus on more on the mental health problem. So the student kind of targeted these three areas and they separate, separated themselves into three big groups. And uh, one of the group who actually tackled the problem, the senior citizen, the students were able to do program for the senior citizen after five o'clock where the senior citizen will have some sort of activities like bingo or maybe like just some sort of trauma agama or something that will be beneficial with them. So it's quite interesting to see how like some of the students probably they came from a bubble before this and they have to give back to the community. But what we wanted to instill is that uh, is the element of being humble and also self-appreciative and also believe that grateful of the small things that you have in life because we felt like with kindness taking a bad seat in a lot of times with this generation we wanted to bring kindness back we wanted to bring kindness as a cool factor for all the students so that's how we kind of like integrated the whole uh, community engagement and the volunteerism but most of the time we try to work together with the student trying to source and also to work together with the city ministry or the minister, uh, minister themselves to find out what we can do more because we believe that a student can score 4.0 or 3.9 but if at the end they don't feel valuable or they don't really value their experience at Unirazak, they don't have any good memories of giving back to the community, there's no point of studying because we believe that each student here, we wanted them to be the best version of themselves but at the same time also we wanted them to give it back. Uh, we call it like almost like the scheme, we call it the pay it forward scheme where when one person is doing good to another person, another person will do good to another person. So we always tell a student that in any projects that you are doing, uh, do follow up with the community in order for that pay forward scheme to continue on and on. Because we don't want that kindness uh, deeds just stop over there. We wanted the kindness deed kind of like following the truth and hopefully there will be a legacy that people will say that, hey, you need rest up was here and they were able to help the community. So that's a little bit how we actually kind of shape our program and how the uh, community engagement works a little bit. But to tell you the truth, we are still exploring, we are still experimenting. We work, for example, with Pharma, uh, with uh, Pasatani as well. I think uh, Shafiq went during my class also for Technic Skill, where we work with PUMB and also with Pharma, where they have to work for one day at the farmer's market or the pasatani and they have to sell fish and sell uh, chicken, fruits and all that. And some people will be saying like, that's so lame. Why are you forcing or are you having your student to go and work at pasatani? Is it for cheap labor? And our answer is that no, we want our student to experience how hard it is to get even one ringgit. Because sometimes we do take for granted uh, money in general. But at the same time, also, we wanted to expand the character of our student. 
where they will be able to learn more from all these unsung heroes. Because we believe that all these people at the Pasar Tani or the Farmer's Market are the unsung heroes that never being celebrated. Because if you think about it, how will you get your produce if they are not there? And for some reason, we believe that they are there because we are paying them, but they work so hard in order to provide the best produce for us. So we kind of have that as a tradition where the students are still working with the PUMB and also with the pharma, where they have to work at the farmer's market. But we are still experimenting and hopefully we are to come up with different models where the student will be able to integrate more with the community. All right. It's a really wonderful answer and, and splendid explanation on the various avenues of community engagement that students at Unirazak can tap into. Uh, what I like and what is unique about Unirazak community engagement programs is it, not a one-off thing. As you explained just now, um, it is a continuous thing. So for example, with the Pay It Forward team, it is something that is ongoing. Uh, usually what I hear is when we do com community engagement, it is uh, like a gotong royong and then that's it. Go and pick up rubbish at the uh, at the beach and then that's it. So it's a very touch and go. But with the uh, community engagement at Uni Raza, it is a continuous uh, support. That means students, they, uh, they instill those values surely, uh, slowly but surely, they instill those values and it's ingrained in them uh, that that spirit of kindness, that uh, those values, intrinsic values that is really much needed uh, in their life once they graduate. And I also like how you describe uh, living in KL as La La Land, as some people might uh, imagine it to be, but it's really not. When you get to the DCC uh, part of it, you will see during the pandemic, uh, uh, yeah, refugees were, 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 you know, did not have uh, much and also, a lot of our our own students also we saw needed help. So therefore, it is uh, really a good initiative to instill these values, uh, even as a one of our subjects at the university. So, um, well, I did want to talk to Harris about Razak Rangers because you mentioned that he is the president of Razak Rangers. But I also know, I'm sure many of the Razak Rangers uh, members, the Rangers per se, are, are tuning in and watching it, uh, watching this live show. So maybe if you could comment a little bit about your experience as a Razak Ranger and, uh, and, you know, and what kind of activities did you do uh, to help students face challenges and things like that. If you are a Razak Ranger and you are watching, please give voice to Faris, who, uh, sorry, Haris who is uh, stuck there. Uh, he is like a, um, a very nice decorative item here. So um, please give voice to him by commenting in the chat box and telling us your experience about being a Raza Ranger at Uni Raza. We'd love to hear from you. Meanwhile, let me go to uh, Mr. Shafiq uh, over there. Uh, coming back to the KPMG program. So, what are the benefits for students who participate in this program? Thank you, Grace. Uh, before I proceed to my answers, can I just show you my board? Actually, that board is actually I got from the PUNB X Generalizat competition, which I won the okay. second place. I mean, yeah, so, he won that. Yes, I, yes, I'm not saying that. Tell us more about that. I'm not saying that because I won the competition, but it, it is actually a great memory because sometimes students be like, "Be tanak lah ikan takut takut," you know. <laughs> it's, it's really irritating, you know. But for me, it's really great experience for me to work with the Pasatani workers and help them, keep, like giving them extra hand on that day. It's really, really beneficial for the students, I guess. And not just that, I also got. Sorry, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Tell yeah, sure. me more about what did you do to, to get that that uh, Actually, wonderful board. On that day, I'm I'll with let you friend. run there and get the board and show us in the camera. Pardon? I will let you take okay. the board now and show us in the camera. <laughs> oh, oh, can oh, oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell us a bit about what did you do? Actually, at that day, I was selling fish. Uh, to be honest, I didn't really know about type of fish, you know. I don't really know about kerap, uh, kembung, kerapu, 
<laughs> I don't really know about all the fish. I think <laughs> it takes time, you know, about half an hour. Yeah. To, you know, mm-hmm. after I heard about the, the part she tell tell to the customer this is ikan kembu, mm-hmm. and I start to learn, 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 and then I think I made it better than the part she. <laughs> but yeah, I also oh. got a wish. I I also got a salary for that day for. Uh, should I tell you guys? For hundred yeah. ringgit. For hundred ringgit, yeah. I think it's not much for me. I can accept it, but the Pachi forced me to accept it. But then I accept it lah. Hundred <laughs> ringgit for that day, I think it's really too much. It's really much. Uh, okay. Should I proceed to the quest to the question just now? Ah uh, yes, yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah. So, to be honest, we are actually hoping. That 2021 will be better than 2020. Uh, like we can do physical events, meet all the students physically and stuff. But yeah, it is hard to believe we still have to go through all these things for another year. In fact, uh, our KPNG itself are trying to add the elements of excitement in our activities, so the students will not get bored. For instance, we have various kinds of approach in order to reach more students to join our events. Like we made our own TikTok. Like myself, I made the cooking videos TikTok and post it on our Instagram. And if Amiru is here, shout out to you, Amiru. You, uh, I know he takes a really big uh, responsible in our team. You know, he takes control on our social media account and always ensure our IG is active. And for you guys, for the Razakins, I can promise to all of you, more exciting events are coming on your way. So I really hope you guys don't forget to join our events. And for the benefits of being a KPMG ambassador, I think. It is like a platform for the student who join to to expose themselves to the corporate culture before ending your degree life. In fact, you will have a big opportunity to build connection with ambassadors from other universities as well. As I mentioned earlier, we have UTP, we have Intech, UITM, and so on. And the big win on being a KPMG ambassador is getting a guaranteed internship placement. At KPMG Malaysia, and if you guys are uh, doing well during your internship, you will have the you will have the chance to be absorbed as a permanent staff at KPMG Malaysia. So I can see that basically KPMG ambassadorship program is not just for accounting students or taxation students, because as we heard about KPMG, we only thought about uh, finance background, accounting background, and so on, but I think it's not because there are some there are one student from UDP KPMG ambassadors which is the vice president is an engineering student you no know? uh, so I think if from our universities if students from Taso or maybe say are willing and interested to join our program you can do so by uh, join our recruitment for the next year term in 2022 and if you Have any question regarding this KPMG ambassadorship program? Do follow our at our official Instagram KPMG underscore Nirza Ambassadors. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Shafiq. You mentioned a very important point just now about being a, a part of the KPMG program. You mentioned the word network, and I can tell you as a working professional, and I think Dr. Zuhairi can testify to this. Network is really important for you to uh, like climb the career ladder, for you to even um, uh, do anything or even work anywhere. You need to have a network, all right, to advance. So um, it's good that KPMG Ambassador gives you that network. It's already there, you know. All you need to do is just join the program. So uh, I think you're doing a great job. You know, you're doing a great job being an ambassador and again being that that voice for KPMG as well as Nirasa. And I also enjoyed your little narrative about a day in a life at a pasar tani, uh, selling fish and knowing the different types of fish. Okay, so can you please name me four types of fish that you know? Oh, <laughs> I totally forgot about that. 
Okay, okay. The first one is catfish. Uh, okay. Because I hate that fish. Okay. I, I didn't eat fish. Keli. Keli. Okay. Kembung. Okay. Mm. Okay. Two more. <laughs> Apa? Ya? Pari. 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 Okay. One more. Is kerapu and ikan. Very <laughs> kerapu. Good. Is it ikan? Oh, is it fish? Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Sorry. well done. You are a certified fishmonger now, so uh, you can, um, and it's a good experience. So I, I have only you know Dr. Zuhairi to thank for that because, um, because you created this opportunity for them to uh, to do this in in one of the as part of their course requirement to go into the market and to actually look for, out for these unsung heroes, as you say, and and we learn from unsung heroes. So I can see Muhammad Farid and your the comments are going so fast. Uh, somebody said that Pakatani was really a fun experience, and I remember uh, seeing a showcase about this. Uh, I think before the pandemic hit, uh, on one of the levels at Uni Raza. Uh, yes, I can see that now. A Pakatani experience was really fun. Muhammad Farid said, "Okay, right." Um, so Dr. Suhaili, coming back to you. Um, now let's talk about what happened when MCO started. You know, how did you manage this real world project? Because before MCO, I could see for myself as well. You brought in the students to Pasatani, you brought them uh, to the people. But when uh, when there was the MCO and students are not allowed to come uh, to the campus um, and everything had to be online, how did it affect their interest in participating in a community project during the lockdown? Hi, Harris. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, no. Uh, Harris. Okay, no. Uh, 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 Okay, never mind. Let him when he can interrupt us anytime when he is ready. Uh, Dr. Zohaili. So yes, yeah, coming back to the question, um, how did you manage, you know, manage to keep uh, students' interest in uh, participating with the community project even during the MCO? Yeah, uh, during the MCO, it took us almost like a storm. Uh, we thought that the student will lose interest, they will just stay home and watch K-pop movies or just sleep all day and not doing much. But to our surprise is that a lot of students, especially in the beginning of the MCO, they approach us and ask us, is there any opportunity that we can give back to the community? Is there any opportunity we can actually collect money in order for a flight that is happening up north? Or is there an opportunity for us to help probably those business uh, mongers that have having problem during this MCO time? So what we did is that, uh, we kind of set up almost like a GoFund uh, system. A GoFund is a website where they can fund for a certain volunteerism act or non-profit organization. And at the same time also, we did ask the student, why not we connect them to those who are like the nasi lemak seller by the street or someone who's actually selling something at the street, but they were not able to open their business due to MCO. We connected both parties, which is the community and also the student. And then what they did is that they meet up online regularly using our Google Meet. And at the same time also, our student advised those business owner, like the small business owner, on how to actually apply for grab food or to make sure their food are available on food vendor or at the same time on the e the commerce the e-commerce part of the payment of the food so we did try to assist our student to connect with the business owner and successfully we were able to uh, help out almost like 43 business owners during the mco during that time apart from that also our student representative council actually did a very good job because during our mco uh, there were a big flight that was happening up north and at that time our student actually approached us and saying that hey uh, is it possible for us to do something more rather than just sitting here because uh, we believe that the people over there probably need a lot of things and what happened is that we helped the students set up the funding opportunity 
and collect money from the staff, from the people out there, and they were able to achieve almost like, if I'm not mistaken, like six thousand ringgit just to help out during the, the people during the flooding. So if you can see, a, a lot of our students actually are quite proactive and we try to make sure that our outlet is quite open as well because we don't want our students to feel defeated because it, it was such a depressing time during the MCO. Everybody was affected whether physically or financially, emotionally, and we wanted that our student not to lose that touch. So. It was quite uh, eye-opening, I think, during the MCO because we were approached by a lot of our students who wanted to give back. Even the staff at Universal, what we did is that we tried to find out who's having problem, meaning that from their groceries or probably staying away really far from their hometown. And what we did is that all of our happiness heroes, including myself, we were dispersed around the city to help out the student. We even helped one student who lived in Taman Desa, if I'm not mistaken, and he doesn't know how to cook. And imagine not knowing how to cook during the MCO is a big problem. And what we did is that we commissioned one of our staff, uh, Mukmin, shout out to Mukmin, who actually cooked for the students for two straight weeks. So what uh, Mumin did is that Mumin uh, cooked for lunch and dinner and sent it over to the student place with a letter from the university so that he'll be able to cross to Tamanese to drop off the food. So that is some of the initiative that we did. Some of the initiative that we did also during the MCO time, uh, we tried to locate students who probably doesn't have transportation and it was quite hard for them to buy grocery. And we asked them what type of grocery they wanted and we actually delivered the grocery to them. Uh, and what we did tell them is that we told them if you know anybody who needed more uh, grocery, please do share with them as well and do ask us because we're going to follow up within three weeks whether the grocery is enough or not. So we try our best to embody the whole community engagement even during the MCO thing. And we know that it was quite restrictive with the physical movement or even in general, it's just really hard to move around. But we believe that an obstacle is always there. Um, if there's a will, there's always a, always a way. So we believe that whatever it is, it's the, the kindest thing that's the one that's going to shine us through. So that's some of the initiative that we even did during the MCO time. And I'm pretty sure that Haris or even Shafiq could share some of the stuff that they were doing because some of the stuff the students were doing during MCO to help out others, probably not reported to us, is a reflection of uh, what type of a person they are, the person that we are very proud to call Razak Kid. Great. Thank you, Dr. Zuhairi. Um, I, I'm so happy to hear that, you know, once the MCO hit, I think the first few things that uh, uh, we did was to look into the students' needs. So, uh, of course, helping community is always uh, always good, but uh, we also need to take care of our own family first before we can help outside. So, um, and, and we saw, I have also been, I was also following the, the news of uh, Unireza and um, the flood that you mentioned, it was not a very um, good time for some of our students and families that were affected. And I'm glad that uh, Raza Ranger stepped up. I'm glad that uh, to you, to your department, um, many students' lives were touched uh, last year. And I also heard about the cooking uh, lunch for that, that student who couldn't cook. I also heard about that last year. And, and kudos to uh, to Mukmin again for uh, for doing that. So. Um, Still, even though during the MCO, to answer simply the question that I put out just now, students were still keen to help. Uh, students were still voicing out, were still um, aware that uh, kindness still goes on and they were offering the help to see where the need is. And um, I'm glad that, uh, that probably part of that is because of what the university has already instilled before that. Hi, uh, Harris. Everyone can hear you actually. Um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> okay. It's, it's always like this. Right. Maybe it's me. Maybe if one of you said hi to him, he would respond. Hi, okay. Harris. Um, hi, Harris. <laughs> okay, it's not All easy. right. It's frozen in time. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, to wrap up what you said earlier, Dr. Zahaili, I'm so glad that students still were interested to help and I'm also glad that we answered the call of many students who needed that help uh, per se. And help is still uh, still being given to those who need, especially like laptop assistance. Um, uh, today we announced that we'll be helping students who do not have uh, data, much data, so we'll be uh, giving out 15 ringgit worth of data every month or something like that. I saw it on the Instagram. So um, help is still being uh, uh, being you know transmitted to the students, but uh, please reach out. Yeah, please reach out to us. Okay, uh, Chet Shafi, sorry, <laughs> he's like going over to his phone. Okay, um, the last question to you uh, is. What can you say to the current and new students of Uniraza about the importance of partaking in university activities as an opportunity to gain experience and knowledge uh, in preparation to become the future leaders of the next generation? Very heavy question, but uh, I'm sure you uh, have prepared something to share with us. Sure, thanks, Grace. So actually, I have met the new Razakian during the virtual orientation last week. And I can say during the session, they look really energetic and lively. Out. So, which I guess a good start for a freshman, even they don't have the chance to go to campus like us before this and even have no clue about Uni Raza. So, I would suggest to Razakians, for all Razakians to at least join one club during your first year as a start. So, at least you will have a clearer view on the management of a club. By joining this club, I think you guys can gain much input, much input, including your personal development by meeting diverse population of people, which allows you to expand your thinking and interests. Perhaps you can also brush up your leadership and communication skills and other elements that you can fill in your resume, as well as preparation on becoming a leader. So I have a fun fact here. At first, I thought it would be hard for me to join clubs as to balance my studies and my activities as I live quite far from the campus. I live in Klang actually. So, but thank God, I think I had joined for the right time, I guess, as during this pandemic, we don't have to drive to campus because all the meetings, all the events are done virtually. So. I think for all the students, for all the Razakins, if you think that you you don't have like, you don't have much time, or maybe you have uh, some problems to go to campus during the physical during the physical time, so this is the time. This is the right time for you guys to join all to join any clubs in Raza. We have I think more than ten clubs in Raza, so you can choose which one do you prefer and which one suit you. So that's all. Uh, I think um, I think that was a very well prepared answer. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Harris. <laughs> Hello, Miss Grace. I'm finally here. Oh my god. Okay, you made it just in time. Let me just uh, uh, finish up with uh, Mr. Shafiq there, just to wrap up what he said, and I just want to highlight that um, one of the importance of joining um, yeah, the. the various activities at Uniraza is to enhance your leadership and communication skills. I think that is a brilliant point that uh, that uh, Mr. Shafiq brought up because like you said, you were kind of an introvert person and living in Klang and all that, you, you, you kind of uh, found it as, uh, like um, a, a challenge to, to join the, the activities but when you did, it's quite easy for you to open up and you know take the lead and things like that. So I'm hoping that you are the voice of many students out there who are still shy and uh, future students who want to join in Raza, this is the perfect uh, avenue for you to tap into your leadership skills and things like that, okay? Right, uh, Harris, yes, so all attention will be on you right now. I think Dr. Zohaini, you can just like slowly move away from the prayer. I'm just joking. I still have a question for you, Dr. Zohaini, don't run away. Um, okay, uh, 
Mr. Harris, it was challenging for you to even come to this show, uh, but you made it by all of my group. You were in some jungle just now and you made it to Jalan Sumbraza. Um, so my question to you, uh, very quickly, and if you could just you know summarize your answer. Uh, I think everyone here knows that you are the president of Razak Rangers and we've been mentioning Razak Rangers uh, off and on and the things that you have done are wonderful and it has impacted the community. So what is uh, community involvement uh, to you and can you share with us uh, some of your community services involvement during the MCO implementation? Alright, thank you Miss Grace. It has been a challenge to finally be in this life. However, here I am. So, first of all, we have to understand what is community. Community is not just about the poor, it's not just about the disabled, it's not just about all the old peoples and whatnot. It's about the relationship. Community is about relationship and Razak Rangers is about fixing and helping to contain that relationship so that people become even closer. We have to understand that these disabled people or this refugee and whatnot, they feel sometimes they feel left out simply because they are so far away from society. So what Razak Rangers do is that we try to make them a normal part of society, make them feel belonging. So what have I done? What have Razak Rangers done to help bring these values into the community simply because simply what we do is that we try to help them grow. Now we see last time, last year, a few years ago, we helped this refugee school under Dr. Zoo himself and under Datin and under so many great leaders. So what we do is that these refugees, when they come to Malaysia, they don't have an IC, they don't have any place to call home. So what we do, what Raza Rangers do is that we provide them some entertainment, we make them feel welcome here so that, you know, they are a part of community. Now, that is practically it, Miss Grace. <laughs> that's uh, that's in, a, in a nutshell of um, how you explained about what Razak Rangers do. But uh, you make it sound so easy. So, uh, can you tell me what are the challenges that you have experienced personally and how you have helped other students when facing these challenges? Well, thank you, Miss Grace. So, for me, as a president, the biggest challenge that I faced was to actually uphold the values brought by my supervisor, Dr. Zhu, which is like sitting right next to me, and also my predecessor, which is Farah No Atira, and then all the greats, Dati No Hafiza, Yus, and whatnot. So the biggest challenge for me was trying to bring in their values, Datin values, and all of the predecessor values, as well as bring in my own values, what I can do to help the other communities. So, what I did was, well, Dr. Zul helped a lot, was that we try to create a system so that when my time passes by, the juniors will know what to do. So right now, when I, I'm no longer involved in Azar in this, however, I see my juniors doing so well with the team, um, that thing is doing so well, Dr. Zu and Yunraza is helping so many people with so many initi initiatives such as the help um, buying internet for uh, examination and whatnot, which is all really, really important and improving um, and help and increasing value towards the community and whatnot. So the biggest challenge I would say is trying to understand that everyone is different and there is no one single way to help person. That is why we need to help people based on what they need. So yes, that is. <laughs> Thank you, Ashraf. You are part of a really strong Razak Rangers team. And yeah, that's practically it, Miss Grace. What we need to do, my biggest challenge was to practically bring in the values of everyone and try to really hold up the community together. All right. Um, thank you so much, Harris. Uh, Harris, you can you can relax a little bit. You seem uh, a bit rushed. Don't worry, though. We have a few minutes left. Um, I've also asked the Raza Rangers that who are watching at the moment to give you a voice when you were voiceless just now. So Amirul Al Afif says. I joined Razak Rangers last year where my friends and I went to hang out with refugee children at Sunway Putra Mall. It was a wonderful experience. There you go, Amirul Alif says that. And so, um, so thank you for the Razak Rangers for helping to do this and also giving a voice to Harris when he didn't have any. Um, 
Now, my last question to you, Paris. Uh, I see that you have a deep passion for community involvement, and I personally can see that because I was telling Dr. Zuhaili and Shafiq just now. Every time I'm at Uni Raza, I can see you at almost every floor that I go to. So um, I see that you're busy, and you know, and you're studying, and you're talking, and you are you're really busy um, doing something. So how do you balance? Uh, learning and community involvement. Um, as a president, you have a big responsibility to to for the community, for the people in I mean the people in your society in the Razak Ranges, and also to focus on your studies at the same time. How do you balance all this? Well, the answer well, is fairly simple. That is over communication. There was a time. When I had an event in the morning, it was under SRC. It was an event from 10 to 12. And then I had another event at 6 p.m. while I have class from 12 to 12 to 3. So how did I manage during that happy day? It's fairly simple. What we need to do is that we need to always ensure we have a plan. And that plan begins the night before, not during the day. So when that plan begins, Everyone knows their role, everyone knows what needs to be done, everyone can think outside the box and try to solve the problem before it appears. So after the event, from 9 to 12, Merdeka Day event, it was very hectic, why not, blah, blah, blah. And then I told my teammates, I will be going to class from 12 to 3 and I will be entrusting to you guys. And if there is any problem, always consult with the vice president. So the vice president will make a decision while I was away. So I went to class until 3 p.m. And then when I come back, everything was perfectly sound. So we were all happy to for the event at 6 p.m. and whatnot. So the biggest advice that I can give to someone who is about to lead, in, whether in their um, class, whether in their group assignments, in their any events and whatnot, the most important thing is to always communicate properly. Because without communication, there's going to be miscommunication, there's going to be problems here and there. So guys, if you guys communicate, you guys can conquer the world. Awesome. Okay, that, that is really great. Um, Mr. Shafiq said the same thing about uh, communication and leadership as well as reiterated by you. So definitely that is something that students can definitely take away from this. Um, I am going to go back to Dr. Zuhaili uh, because we're going to end the show and uh, it's already five so uh, mr harris i just want to thank you for the effort that you put in today to come live i uh yeah <laughs> uh because um you were somewhere somewhere i don't know where but there were trees behind you and then uh, then you were here and then now you're with us so highly so uh, you have made tremendous efforts to be i mean you could have easily given up but you didn't and and we are actually also rooting for you i'd love to hear from you so thank you so much and all those inputs that you have given us just now are, are definitely something that our viewers can take away uh, with all right dr zuhaili we are back to you and we're going to end so before we end what is your best advice to encourage students to participate in these activities that Shafiq and Harith has so um, nicely put to us and um, and this is all done during their studies so how does your participation benefit them as a student and as a community member all right uh, so what I always tell even Harris or even Shafiq is that do you the most important thing do the best version of yourself uh mm -hmm. don't let others tell you what to do do what you felt right uh in your gut feeling that's the most important thing like i said you can be a studious student at any university any student in the world can be that but not many can actually balance from being a human being and also a good student and to tell you the truth is that uh, nowadays it's almost like a trend even when you finish your school uh, years basically in college people at the industry also wanted to look what are the different facets of yourself what are the different layers of yourself because education is so great but there's so much education can prepare you but all this experience with the community engagement the community service actually add a more deeper connection or a different layer to understand you better and it's also a character building uh, mechanism where 
it kind of build your greediness uh being able to uh, accept feedback for example or uh, your communication skill like what Harris was saying about and also your leadership skill in general so my best advice is that don't feel pressure like you have to do something when the time is right the time is right when you felt like there is something that you needed to do is that uh, just follow your heart my suggestion is that if you have Netflix at home watch uh, this movie called Moxie uh, Moxie is actually a movie about this girl in high school and basically she was fed up with the whole school system how uh, everybody voice was silent people were making fun of other people and she felt like before it was just okay to be uh, not having a sound coming out from herself and then what she did is that she kind of started a revolution where if there is something wrong and you know is wrong you have to fight for what is right so if you have time feel free to go to netflix and watch this movie called moxie because i think there's a great inspiration where you can find your own voice and be the best version of yourself and i always believe that if you see something that is not right or something that you felt like you can contribute just do it because life is way too short Rather than just sitting back, yes, you can have like a fun life still sitting back and not doing anything. But you know what? What's the worst thing can happen if you started to start on a group or started to fight for something? It will just bring better things rather than just drawbacks to your life. And also it will make your life interesting. And I always tell this to the student, uh, you are the director and the script writer of your life. You decide how your life is going to be. If you decide that your life is going to be average, it's going to be average. But if you decide that your life is going to be amazing and you want a memory that will stay stick to you forever and you know that you're able to touch someone's life, then you will be able to do so. So uh, to encapsulate again, to summarize what I say is that I would say just do you when you felt like there is something that you wanted to contribute. Just come to us, the Division of Student Experience of the School of Happiness, and we'll try our best to guide you. To tell you the truth, Harry is one of the kind that he was very independent. He did a lot of the program by himself. I didn't do much. I was just sitting back and not helping much. But uh, we are still evolving and we wanted to help as much as we can. The most important thing is that communication. If there's something that we cannot help, we will tell you right away. But we wanted to make sure that this experience is unique for you and only for you. Thank you. Those are indeed very wise words from our yeah chief of uh, wisdom officer and um yeah amiral says good job harris and oh, okay so um but i'm gonna have the student say the last word so uh first i'll have topic um uh this is your your chance to say whatever that you want to say to whoever who is watching so, all right thank you thank you thank you my Raza, for inviting me to this URT talk session as a representative of KPMG in Raza Ambassadors and it was a pleasant evening to spend my time with you guys so for the viewers don't forget to follow our official Instagram and official Tito account KPMG at Raza Ambassadors for more contents and upcoming exciting events see y'all uh, okay Wonderful, wonderful. That is really short and sweet. Okay, Harris, I'm uh, giving the platform to you to say uh, your keep it short as possible. Well, hello everyone. This is the first time in a really calm manner that I'll be having the floor. So, first of all, I would like to say thank you to Inraza for organizing this and for calling me to be a part of the speaker. That's number one. Number two, please follow Raza Rangers Instagram account, which is at Raza Rangers, simply because we will be having so much, so many more events in the future. And number three, lastly, if you guys have any ideas for any volunteering events, feel free to come and contact us and we will try to make that event fruitful. We have our team and we have Dr. Zoo that is willing to help us and we want to empower you guys. We want to give you guys the chance to make an event to be program director of an event, to be, to take the challenge to be a program director. So that should be it. Follow Razak Rangers at Razak Rangers Instagram. Right, wonderful. 
Publicity. All right. So thank you. So my Kimmy has also so back in the frame. Okay, great. Uh, so with, with our wonderful panel of speakers today, uh, with um, our assistant professor, Dr. Zuhaili Atma, Chief Student Experience Officer. Thank you so much for availing your time uh, for us. I know it's not easy, easy, it's raining and everything, but you uh, you shared so many good inputs about community engagement and how important it is to instill it into the program itself and to instill it into the heart and soul of uh, Unirasa students. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Wan Mohammad Shafiq Saez, for also availing your time, uh, one of our KPMG ambassador, and for sharing with us the importance of being involved in um, any of the Uniraza um, uh, activities or even societies. Uh, and last but not least, thank you, Mr. Haris bin Isan, um, star of the show for today. You you made it. You made. It. That's all I can say. You made it. Uh, President of uh, Raza Ranger 2019-2020. Um, I hope that our students are inspired by you and they will carry on the values that have been instilled to you by uh, the predecessor and as well as Dr. Zuhaili. And um, Maini Raza says thank you everyone for watching today's talk session. So I'm going to uh, end the show and going to wrap up uh, by uh, Muhammad Ashraf says you guys are great uh, okay right so you have tremendous support from uh, Unirasa itself and uh, the students the staff um, everybody is there we are we are like a family so uh, that's all from uh, from us let me just remind all our viewers out there that um, the Unirasa March Intake 2021 is still open now and you can visit www.uniraza.edu.my to apply and you can call us at 032789-1599 or WhatsApp us at 014-337-2925 um, You can also email us at drjoe, drjo at uniraza.edu.my don't forget to follow My Uni Raza on Facebook and Instagram and also to subscribe to our My Uni Raza YouTube channel. Stay tuned for our upcoming events with more interesting topics at uh, Uni Raza, your TikTok live session. Uh, our final session will be tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, tomorrow morning. Please um, stay tuned and uh, listen to our talk on uh, I think the 10 tips of uh, IT skills, the 10 IT skills that you need to have right now, right? And it applies for all students, working adults, or whoever, all right? So tune in and join us for that discussion, and it will be delivered by um, uh, people from key industries, if I'm not mistaken, Chamran Digital. So, okay, uh, thank you guys again. You can have a uh, Tihari now. <laughs> I think Haris needs one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Dr. Zuhaili, thank you again, as well as Shafiq, thank you, and Harris. So have a lovely weekend, all of you, and yep, and have a great, great uh, weekend ahead. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Mm -hmm. hey, bye.